from all, to all, with all, for all, through all. We thank the gods of creation. We thank the ancestors. We thank the forces of nature. And we thank the earth. We thank them for their direction, their protection, their guidance, for keeping us, showing us, allowing us to know and enjoy life to its fullest, now and later. Black people who must love with the slow amounts of time, time was ours to hold in the soft, low, warm chambers of our hearts. And was we, the half-fooled mommies and daddies of a sun world, would turn our strands of hair and two antennas to tune in the juju madness and syncopated love rhythms of Africa. And we loved with time, and we took the time to love, and with the right time we loved, and we loved time after time. Will we ever love? Love again? Will we ever love again? Will we really ever love again? Or will we just sit and rot away with the brighter tomorrows in the skag field, rat cluttered halls of our minds? Black people, what y'all gonna do? Black people, what y'all gonna do? Will the real black people please stand up? See 
Good evening, our story viewing family. Uh, once again, this is Brother Johnny sitting in for your host, W.C. Johnson. Uh, we, tonight's show, we've had a lot of requests for the uh, guests that we're going to have on tonight's show, and I'm very pleased to have them, given that uh, you know we've been getting a lot of requests, not only for them, but people have been wanting us to talk about this issue regarding violence and what's been going on in the community and what's going on not only with our children, but what's been happening as far as in the schools what's been going on as far as what's happening in the prisons and so forth. So again, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. I'm very pleased once again to have them. We have from True Love Movement, we have Mama Fire here. That's right. right How you and doing? we have Brother Shaq here. Right on, what's happening, brother? And so if y'all could just kind of give us a little intro in regards to the True Love Movement and exactly what you all, I guess, are, are doing in regards to the community. Okay. okay. So I'll start. Um, True Love Movement, I think at its core, is a, a business that is supporting the mental wellness of black people, specifically. Um, and we do this through licensed professional counseling, as well as um, community activism, um, production of creative, creative arts and media, specifically to support our people and our social, emotional, and behavioral health. Um, and it got started, I would say, about 15 years ago, and it's just transformed and developed into, um, you know, we actually have an art office where we see people, mm -hmm. uh, youth and adults that come in for support. Um, but then we do many, many things in the community with the mission of, uh, you know, specifically black people understanding their, uh, well, humanization, humanizing, uh, rehumanizing black people, but also um, the understanding self-love um, specifically. What you say, Brother Shay? I say right on. Uh, mm -hmm. We, our work essentially is to help our people gain a sense of their own power. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, multi-generational healing yes. uh, to undo the multi-generational trauma. We say, we say at True Love Movement, we know hurt people hurt people. We always hear that, you know. And so we say if hurt people hurt people, imagine what healed people can do for our people. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that is the, the function of our work. Now, is True Love Movement a, a mental health agency or... What, how would how would it, I guess you describe or define Absolutely. It? Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So but it's more. it's so yeah. it's it's so much more mm -hmm. because uh, True Love Movement didn't start this idea that black people really need something specific mm -hmm. for black people. Uh, historically, I think it was uh, a doctor by the name of Samuel Cartwright who practiced medicine in New Orleans in 1851 to 1858. And he is the, the individual who came up with, uh, he invented something called drapedomania. You may be familiar with drapedomania. Drapedomania was uh, the mental illness that enslaved Africans who were fleeing captivity uh, were identified with having a mental illness because they continued to try to run away. And mm -hmm. so that was probably the first historical example of when there was a, a very specific uh, categorization of mental illness that was you know unique to black folks and so he did that here in from 1851 to 1858 and we know when our people ran away they branded them with that fleur de lis mm -hmm. right on the face so mm -hmm. black mental wellness has a or black mental health rather has a history that's very important here in new orleans so of course we're not doing that but we didn't set the precedence for that that's mm -hmm. an example of why our people need something that is very very different than the conventional mental health models that are Eurocentric. Now you mentioned the enslavement and what happened mm -hmm. with Africans here in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. you know, I guess you can take that and say all across the diaspora, you know, but particularly here in New Orleans, I know slavery had a certain unique harshness to it, even though they may have allowed certain other things as far as Congo Square and so forth. But I remember reading with Dr. Joy uh, Degree about post Slave traumatic, traumatic slave syndrome. Yeah, if you could kind of just comment somewhat on that in regards to just how maybe these effects still we dealing with them to this day, mm -hmm. and we may run across people in the community right. that they may have this problem and that problem, and they may not know that this is something that maybe is a carryover just from having undergone that slave process. 
Definitely. Definitely. So, you know, True Love Movement kind of started because I was doing community activism work mm -hmm. uh, for many years. And, you know, I'm getting with really bright, wonderful people with great understanding and great minds and great hearts. And nothing really ever changed. I was like, you know, we're getting here and then we eventually getting into mm -hmm. arguments and having issues, you know, somebody falls off and says, I can't mess with y'all, I can't deal with y'all. And I kept wondering, what's wrong, you know? And then I'm thinking about, I was in the school system and seeing the children and seeing the children do the same thing uh, amongst each other and these kind of things. And I said, this is deep. You know, this issue that we're having is really, really deep with each other. And so that made me start to think about the psychology of us, uh, you know, enslaved people's minds mm -hmm. and like the, the psych psychological ramification of slavery mm -hmm. and what it has done to not only to our ancestors, but what has, you know, generationally just moved from generation to generation and condensed mm -hmm. in this, you know, very serious version of what we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot ignore mm -hmm. the the past, our mm -hmm. historical past and what that has done to us emotionally, mentally, behaviorally, socially, um, and, and the ramifications of that which, which we're seeing today. What you right. say, Brother Shea? I was thinking that when we had opportunity to sit with uh, Dr. Joy, the mm -hmm. Mama Joy, and mm -hmm. one of the things she said that stood out uh, was that it was the secrets that make us sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that resonated with us because so much of what has happened to us, uh, we don't really have historical context for it. You know, America socializes us to be very ahistorical. Mm -hmm. And so usually we're approaching whatever our challenge is with the question, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what happened. Mm -hmm. And see, we, we know that that's very different. And we're convinced that having that historical context isn't about being deep. Uh, or heavy because you know a lot of history, but it's a bridge to your sanity. Mm -hmm. You know, we recognize that in order for us to survive enslavement, we had to give up some of our humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's no, there's been no intervention uh, and there's been no reclamation of that humanity. So it, and as a matter of fact, the oppression persists. Yes. So the behavior that we're seeing is an expression of something. It isn't simply just the behavior. And the Eurocentric, uh, mental health models are, are into behavior modification uh, as opposed to rehabilitating or, or redressing what happened to the root cause. Mm -hmm. uh, so fundamentally the way we think about the brain and the way the brain functions for black people uh, is, is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and it, it's, it's evident in our work. So. But you know you hear people, but I still hear this, talk as if slavery was so long ago. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the importance of history, mm -hmm. and I guess we can say the importance of knowing right. oneself Definitely. and knowing where you come from. The thing is, people will say, well, slavery didn't happen a long time ago, but mm -hmm. they won't include the process of after slavery, That's right. mm -hmm. then going through Jim Crow, That's That's right. Right. segregation, That's right. you understand, mm -hmm. the continued, you understand what I'm saying, today. forms of white supremacy yes. that mm -hmm. we still deal with to this day. That's and right. the effects that it has That's right. mm -hmm. on us, it's as if people want to dismiss that right. and make this more of an individual thing sure. instead of a group thing. I, I guess what I want to ask you that knowing that you're dealing with a group problem, and someone mm -hmm. say racism, we'll say, well, we know it's not an individual thing. Correct. It's a group thing. It's an institutional thing. Right. Mm -hmm. How, I guess, can you best deal with the true love or the healing in regards to saying, given that you're dealing with a group mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to when you did look at most agencies, mm -hmm. if you want to use the term mental health agency, they're about strictly the individual mm -hmm. and healing that individual based upon maybe particular things that is happening in an individual's life. Right. Mm -hmm. How I guess what I'm trying to ask is how can we deal with this whole group effort? Mm -hmm. It has to be dealt with on both levels, the right. micro and the macro. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth of the matter is, that's the reason why we create uh, creative arts and media mm -hmm. in order to affect 
um, many people on the macro level and in groups, but the what we say, Brother Shaq said it, hurt people hurt people, imagine what healed people can do. Mm -hmm. And so the true love mm -hmm. and true love movement is about self-love. It really is an individual healing that has to happen. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, when it, it impacts you in a way mm -hmm. that you, you know self-love and that self-love just radiates out mm -hmm. into other people and and so that's what it's done for us that's you right. know as we went through the intervention mm -hmm. because we can't be people that say you know you have to do you know x y and z and have not have done the healing right. ourselves right. Good so point. we went through you know what we needed to go through for ourselves to create the formulas that work for our people mm -hmm. and are working and so in True Love Movement, we have something called the Truth Ambassadors. They're right. you know, the people who have healed themselves because we understand that we ain't really healing. We are promoting healing, facilitating healing, whatever that is. And then as they heal themselves, they begin to open up their eyes and say, mm. oh, I got to tell everybody. I got to tell right. my mom. I got to tell That's my right. children. I got to tell. And it spreads in that way off the micro level. But then we're always, you know, in front of a camera or on the radio or on social media with these Excellent. messages Excellent. constantly, constantly. The message of uh, self-love is here. You know, we have to do this work mm -hmm. and understanding where these things come from that's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you 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 mentioned the like we're part of a collective mm -hmm. in a racialized society and and that's that is true but one of the things that we do that's different that helps ground the work that we do is a significant amount of political education yes. before yes. we even get into what had happened with you mm -hmm. we got to find we got to talk about what had happened with to us, us. Yes. Oh, so you yeah. see what i'm saying yeah. collectively yeah. Yeah. just just so that there is a historical context with a reference point because the consequence of not doing that uh it is evident in the behaviors of our people we, we see them deliver, uh, exhibiting a collective low self-esteem it's because we don't have a larger context to what happened so we everyone that we see and we know we're related to is in effect very low, so we presume that this is just what we are, that we're just inherently bad people, mm -hmm. and that we, we're shiftless, we're lazy, we don't want to do anything because of not knowing the history. So we really stress the history, but we teach that. Uh, long before we can get down to the individual, because individualism is a function of, of uh, or manifestation rather of, of internalized racial oppression, namely internalized racial superiority, and white folks have that. Um, in a collectivized society like this, we're not individuals. We don't even have an individual experience. We'd like to. We mm -hmm. think we are. But that's part of the psychosis because we'll be in a room full of people just like us and, and swear up and down that, man, you don't know me. I ain't like you. Mm -hmm. And we all catching the same hell from the same oppressor. But in, in here, you know, when we say that you're in your white mind, not your right mind when you're thinking that way. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is a heavy duty socialization brought on by, you know, you, you mentioned uh, slavery. So 249 years of that, another 150 three years off the plantation. So this is multi-generational programming that has happened to us yes. that persists. And and we're not just gonna wake up out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of work mm -hmm. that has to be done. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we had someone the last time I was hosting the show, the individual specifically wanted someone to address this issue of the violence. Mm -hmm. Now, as I listen to the two of you all, for someone like me, maybe because of my background already, I'm just listening to what you're saying, and one could just listen to you and say, well, maybe that's a reason why all these things are happening. Mm -hmm. But for some individuals in our community, they still are having trouble connecting the dots. Right. Because you mentioned something very important. Even though it's a, we are individuals, we all are going through this problem as a group thing. Mm -hmm. Correct. And a lot of us are sharing the same, similar same. trauma mm -hmm. over and over again, right. whether it's the loss of loved ones, mm -hmm. to a violent, traumatic experience mm -hmm. or whether it's just the things you go through as you asked me earlier how my day was going right. the day to day things mm -hmm. that we have to go through right. I don't know the way I, I look at it in many ways I'm like well, okay as I mentioned to you I'm doing what I can given I'm still in my opinion right. living behind right. enemy lines right. on right. A, or some with, I've heard some say just a bigger plantation right. mm. but looking at that situation what is it then that you think, because I always hear people say they want solutions, mm -hmm. and so one of the reasons why you all were requested is that individuals were looking at what I said, well, hold up, Brother Shaq, Mama Fire, 
they have a program that perhaps can address this right. and we can see if we can do something about the violence. Mm -hmm. Perhaps instead of looking at getting it to it in a late form, maybe we need to start looking at it from the standpoint of the love, the healing, mm -hmm. but the blockage I keep getting, and maybe you all can work to, to make people feel more comfortable with this. Folk continue to have problems with the idea of healing and therapy, at least in our community, mm -hmm. yeah. is what I seem to get. Right. And if y'all could just address mm -hmm. that. Definitely. I think the root of the violence is anger. Mm -hmm. and, the, yeah. and, and we have a, a right to be angry for Definitely. all we've been through and rage. And we have also learned that the black man is bad. Yep. And, and so not only am I, you know, and I only am, you know, we bad people, but everyone around us is bad. And so we exact the rage and the violence on each other mm -hmm. because we're the closest to one another, mm -hmm. closest in proximity. And we have to understand that. I think a lot of our people, cognitive dissonance, Brother Shay, Definitely. you know, totally deny with saying, you know, how, how y'all keep blaming a white man? This is us. You know, we doing this to ourselves. Right. We doing this to each other. Right. And, and they're not really looking at how that has impacted the, the emotional, I keep saying emotional, because that's where that's where rage is, right. you know, and 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 that's where you know sadness is, depression is. I coined a phrase called oppression, oppression depression. depression. That's right. And all of us suffer from it, brother. Mm -hmm. At one point in our lives or another, I see children in oppression, depression. And for black people specifically, we have to understand what oppression has done to us and us emotionally really to understand how we go heal from it. That's why the political education component is so important. But just the, the understanding that if you need to cry, you mm -hmm. need to cry. Mm -hmm. And you need to learn to manage the anger and to manage the rage right. in a way that is beneficial to you and to your family and to our community and on and on and on. And that's a skill. That's a skill. Those are a combination of skills. That can be taught and learned. That's right. Well, again, uh, we're going to open up the phone lines. Uh, do we have a call on there? Yes. Hello. How you doing? Okay. All right. Good. Good. Good evening, caller. How you doing? All right. My name is Pearl Miss Clabbery. How you doing? Okay. How you doing, Hi. sister? I just wish that I have a comment. I just wish there was something that they can do about the crime because people getting so for not and that's innocent people that are getting shot at they need to do something yet they need to hold all your people accountable for their actions what can they do to make us feel a lot safer okay thank you thank you for that call i'd i'd like to speak to that mm -hmm. as as i heard the sister ask what can we do what can we do mm -hmm. and she mentioned about holding accountable Part of the way we've been socialized is to consider that ourselves individually, we are powerless people. And so this, this thought that the solution is over there, mm -hmm. the muscle is over there, that I'm gonna go get so-and-so for you to get you together, is misinformed. That is white organizational culture, that is white supremacy 101. And we're socialized that way to, to the point we think that that's our thing. It, we, we, we cannot impose a solution on our people. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Our people have been imposed upon since we were kidnapped and brought here. Mm -hmm. And that has produced this anger and resentment and mm -hmm. hostility. Mm -hmm. So an imposition or forcing our people to do something is ill-advised because they're, which, what we're seeing in, in, the, in the way of violence is mm -hmm. the result of that kind of an imposition. See, the violence that our people witnessed for all those centuries on the plantation, it, we were socialized to think that black people should be hurt, maimed, killed, violated, or that are not human. And, and see, I don't want you to think that this love thing we're talking about, this true love thing or this mm -hmm. self-love thing is something soft. That's right. Because that's not what we're saying here. The truest love you can have is for yourself, because you're with you 24 hours a day. You're, you're the only person been with you your whole life, like your mom or your dad and nobody. Everything good happened to you, you were there. Everything bad happened to you, you were there. So if you're not all the way good with you, 
you're really danger to everybody else. That's right. And so if you don't love yourself, when you're reminded of yourself through your brother, your sister, you're going to exact that violence on them. Now, the opposite is also true, or the inverse. If you do love yourself, and you recognize, it's my brother. Mm -hmm. Because that's just me right over there. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm good with me, I can embrace you. But there's no, you can't impose that on somebody. You can't make somebody do that. Mm -hmm. That has to happen through very deliberate and intensive self-discovery. Yes. Self-analysis and self-assessment. And that can't happen without the knowledge of political education. And then we guide our people through that. That is a healing journey. And oftentimes when people hear love, they think, well, it's soft, or you're supposed to be some kind of a doormat, or it's supposed to be, oh, come here, give me a hug, it's going to be okay. That's not what this is. That's right. This we're, is super hard work. We're moving through the lens of, is this behavior me loving myself? Mm -hmm. You know, so for those of our people who say they love black people, you can tell by how they talk to black people and how they deal with black people. You how see they talk I mean? to themselves and how they deal with themselves. Right. And you know, I heard Mama say, Mama the caller say they, you know, and, and, and Mama, I mean, let me say this, that any, any black woman, black mama is like, Lord, can we just please stop killing each other? Because right. we are concerned about not only our own children, but you know, the children of New Orleans and, right. the, and the families of New Orleans, we feel that very deeply. But it's like, we say they, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? And the truth of the matter, it's we. And we, in the True Love Movement, we say just us. Mm -hmm. The justice that we are looking for is just us. Who is coming to save us? Mm -hmm. Who is coming to say, okay, we're gonna put more police on the street, mm -hmm. we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do more right. policy work and more laws? That's not the answer. The answer is when we are in power of ourselves and we are in control of ourselves then and, and when we understand that that's important and that can even really happen and that's what we're doing this groundbreaking work like this work must be done and it must be done specifically for black people right. you know we have created things specifically for us formulas that work and that we're really trying to get our people to understand the power that we do have to stop violence in ourselves first, right? Stop violent thoughts, stop violent actions, stop violent words, first to ourselves, right? then to our brothers and sisters, and beyond. This is not an easy fix. This is not a quick fix. That's right. Well, I, I, the caller mentioned something about safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you all just went through an entire history right. of the so-called black experience here in America. That's right. And judging by that history, I'm, I have to ask the question, is there a time where we ever felt safe? Never. No. You know, I mean, you look Never. at the slavery, and what happened during enslavement, right. and we talk Never. about what happened, you know, even during Reconstruction. Right. They were steady at war with us. They came, wiped all that out, right. mm -hmm. put us back in the system of Jim Crow, right. sharecropping. We know mm -hmm. the situation that happened. They found any way they could to lock us up. That's right. They found any way we know you know, we had people such as Ida B. Wells mm -hmm. documenting lynchings. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, where you had all of this going on in our communities. We know that we had to go through, as we moved into the 50s and 60s, with the marching, mm -hmm. you know. And we know the violence that we experienced in Birmingham, in Montgomery, right. here in New Orleans. That's right. right. The Zaha Housing Project. We know what happened mm -hmm. uh, here in New Orleans, across the river in Algiers. Mm -hmm. during Every Katrina. time during Katrina. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm trying to figure this out because people keep saying they want safety. I never forget, I think it was in the early 90s, Minister Farrakhan had a tour called the Stop the Killing Tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that Stop the Killing Tour, I never forget he said, he said, we gotta stop the killing, but we gotta stop the killing where it starts. And you know, when you have a society that has been built on killing, raping, genocide, right. all these other things, you have to ask, well, where has there ever been safety in this society? So the caller, I, I'm more than sure the caller's not coming from a standpoint of white fragility. Right. Because it didn't sound like the caller 
had that particular background. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it's just something that our people have produced. I heard a person one time calling it, calling it self-induced myopia or some type of amnesia. Right. Where we always, studies show that when you look back at the past, you tend to look back at the past more fondly that's than right. perhaps what they really that's were. Right. That's right. I think that's a good example of the cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Just trying to cope. We, the reason we talk about the history, we spend so much time talking about the history, is because I understand, or at least we collectively understand, that much of the way we deal with what has happened to us in the past is very passive. We talk passively about it. We say, you know, slavery happened, you know, um, they did this. I mean, very, very passively. But when we like to talk about it the way it actually happened, we like to talk about all of the steps that were involved, from the invading uh, our, our people's lands, to destroying the land, to raping and pillaging the land, violating the women, taking the riches, killing everyone, enslaving the rest you know, going to that sojourn to the slave castles. Mm. I mean, we like to talk about the whole, cause see, when you talk about it all the way like that, it forces you to really deal with it. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, it was slavery, like slavery happened and then something else happened. And so I like to really think about and talk about how our people labored for 249 years for the, the, the duration of their lifetime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. till death for zero dollars, forced labor. I mean, the reason I'm pointing it out is, how in the world can you be a healthy, productive human being mentally with that kind of a, a imposition? Mm. And how can you produce healthy children under those circumstances? And so when mm -hmm. our people walk off the plantation in 1865 after dealing with 249 years of that trauma, mm -hmm. what do we expect them to do? You mentioned reconstruction, so they just reconstructed the, the plantation system to, the, to the, the employment system. It's the same, you know, it's reconstruct. Mm -hmm. So we've been exploited deliberately um, for the entire time of this horrible relationship. So we like to talk about that only so that we can get a clear sense that of course we're sick. Mm -hmm. That there's nothing wrong with us, but something very traumatic has happened to us, everybody we know and everybody we come in contact with, and we haven't dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as Mama Fire said, we don't all necessarily think we can deal, that like it can be dealt with, that we mm -hmm. can heal it. From has it has to be. Mm -hmm. We know it has to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not because, because we're talking a lot about our ancestors, but we're thinking about our descendants. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like we have a serious duty and obligation right now to do something for our great grandchildren who may never meet us. Mm -hmm. Right here, yes. right now, this is mm -hmm. our time. Mm -hmm. And, and we, they need to know we weren't cowards mm -hmm. during that time. And so if, if we're going to be productive with our people and create safety, we have to be healthy to do that. Yes, definitely. We can't, it, we can't do it from the outside in. We have to really develop these things inside. And it's difficult to do that when you don't think you're equipped. Mm. Yeah, and the truth of the matter is, is that mm -hmm. safety, what is, what is safety and what does it look like on an individual, you know, on a, on a just us level? Right. Mm -hmm. like, we are, we are busy hurting ourselves and we don't look at that. We don't look at what we're drinking, what we're eating, what we're smoking, what we're, you know, and we're, we're actually not safe in our own selves, mm -hmm. you know, let alone at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about all the babies who are not safe at home right now because not only are they they're 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 witnessing physical violence they may be ab ab being abused and have physical violence their sexual violence there's all these things that we don't want to talk about mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so where is the safe place and so i choose to make my home my body for one i choose to make a safe space and then my home a safe space for myself and my children and then it radiates from there mm -hmm. the, the safety work the love work mm -hmm. the the justice work Mm -hmm. All of that starts from self, mm -hmm. and that's what True Love Movement is, is, is on a mission to do. That's right. Um, I'm going to ask this question only because sometimes I get people who want certain questions asked. One of the things they want to ask you to, do you particularly have an opinion in regards to what's going on with the school systems here and with the kids? Mm, yes. <laughs> 
So my children are homeschooled. Okay. And okay. and I have five children, um, okay. some of them adults at this point, mm -hmm. and they were homeschooled. Okay. Um, because I do believe in taking our power mm -hmm. to to educate our children mm -hmm. in our own hands. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't believe that you can, you know, send your children to your enemy for education, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely where I come from mm -hmm. in it. And um, I did, I was a counselor, a school counselor in the school system. Mm -hmm. And so I got a chance to see after Katrina, you know, these charter schools and these kind of things. And, and, and what I would have to say is, mamas and babas, we got to take our children back and homeschool mm -hmm. because it's never going to work. It isn't designed to work. Mm -hmm. It isn't designed to make our children brilliant mm -hmm. and critical thinkers right. <clears throat> and wonderful people to each other. It's not designed that way. Mm -hmm. It's designed to continue filling up prisons. Mm -hmm. It's designed to have our children as the labor force. Right. It's designed to you know, our children, very low level reading, low level mathematics, and, and, and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So um, there were definitely, we can play music and march in the bands for, for Mardi Gras and these mm -hmm. type of things, you know, where that is. So, you know, I'm not trying to go there or whatever, but I do believe in the power of educating our own children. Mm -hmm. Brother Shay? Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't have as much of an opinion as I do an assessment or an analysis mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. it. I mean, we some many years ago there was a, at War Manifest I did a workshop called Fixing What's Wrong with New Orleans Schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that came from many years of doing work inside the schools, doing research, understanding what's really happening inside of the schools. And there is no way that the schools are designed to improve the condition of our people. And the the fundamental thing that I know really hurts, and I think it's hurt, it hurts our people so bad, is kind of what the caller alluded to earlier. There is not an authentic mechanism that exists that holds people accountable. Poor people, mm -hmm. particularly poor people who are not organized people, in a city that's 40% poverty, which is more than twice the national average at 15, we have to have the context, but there's no there's no mechanism for holding anybody accountable and and the fact that we have to even resort to something like that for justice is an indicator that this isn't an equitable arrangement mm -hmm. and that there's nothing that is going to be equitable about it because it's not intended to be it's not broken as they say it's not broken this is how it's supposed to work and part of what hurts us is that we don't want to believe that people would do that. Mm -hmm. right. We don't want to believe that people would be so heinous as to, you know, experiment on our children, exploit them. But it's been happening mm -hmm. because it, it's, that's what it's intended to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not my opinion. Mm -hmm. The history will show the outcomes mm -hmm. of, of what happens inside the school system and what the school systems produce. We work with children all the time who have gone through the school system. They have no sense of how to do any kind of critical thinking, critical analysis, mm -hmm. never had any exposure to it. And it's not their fault. They don't know what they don't know. You see, and they're, and they're, they're socialized that someone else will make the decision for you. That if you need something, you ask somebody. So it puts them a, a, in, a, in a position where they're very vulnerable because they're constantly looking for help. And they think that help is what our people want. Our people don't want help. Our people need relief. It's very, very different. But you, if you cannot handle your own food, clothing, shelter, and love, those four basic needs, if you cannot yes. produce that for yourself, it puts you in a situation where you need help. And as long as you need help, you're in a position to be exploited. And so we are socialized to say, well, I need somebody to help because I don't have a sense of my own power. So it. What, what happens in the schools is the, the this codependent relationship is institutionalized. And mm. it's, it's part of the normative behavior. So we, you know, that, that's that. You know, mm. I mean, that's just what it is and that's what it's intended to do. And that's unfortunate. And until we do something very differently for our children, it's going to produce the same result because historically that's what it's done. It doesn't mean that all the people are bad people. It doesn't mean that our people that work there aren't trying. Right. But it just means that from a policy standpoint, from a structural standpoint, and from a resource and time standpoint, it's a very, very limited, narrow uh, scope of what it's intended to do. And it's very, very effective at what it does. It's very, very, very effective. And 
you know, until we decide to do something different, it will continue. Mm. Well, I'm going to go back to Mama Fire mentioned prisons. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the schools, often they've been referred to as sort of a school to prison pipeline. And we kind of given the audience a little historical background. They can go study for themselves what happened here in Louisiana with Angola State Penitentiary and how it began. And right. Please look up Parchment Penitentiary in Mississippi mm -hmm. and the history behind that and how peonage was used as a way yep. to essentially get us back in slavery. But another question people wanted me to ask of you all is looking at, as I mentioned, Jim Crow, and I'm thinking about Michelle Alexander's book right now, The New Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. What can you just give us some maybe ideas in regards to how you would perhaps incorporate true love movement into what's going on with the prisons because we have a serious issue where individuals are saying people are going to prison but they're not getting rehabilitated mm -hmm. they're not getting the mental health and the therapy that they should be getting and now individuals are coming back into our community and all it's doing is causing perhaps further trauma yep. within families that's within, right. you know, the community. It, could you perhaps address that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brother Jay. Well, that's, that isn't as complicated as it sounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, the prison system, first of all, again, we look at the historical relationship. Before we were categorized as three-fifths during the three-fifths compromise, we were not considered to be fully human. Mm -hmm. That is the basis and the foundation of the relationship as a, I'm talking about the political relationship as it relates to the political designation of black people. All right, so there is an undercurrent that black folks aren't human and don't feel and don't think and don't do all those other kinds of things. And the reason why that exists is because when something isn't human or it's an inanimate object, you can treat it any old kind of way with impunity. And so that is part of the American culture. So that applies to all black people, everyone who has that political designation of black. So poor people in particular and incarcerated people are not, they, I mean, they, they, people don't respect them because they, they don't have any power to make anybody do anything. Everybody's looking to exploit them. Everybody wants to fix them. You see, everybody wants to help them because the thought process is they're in that condition because there's something inherently wrong with them. So somebody wants to create a program or a policy to fix them. Mm. There is no systemic analysis on how they came to be in that condition. And so when someone goes to prison, it's their fault. So you don't have to treat them as a human being. They're not accorded um, human dignity. There isn't an interest in any kind of rehabilitation. There is a lot more money in not rehabilitating them. And releasing them back into the community only exacerbates and compounds the oppression because when you put a lot of sick people together, you're gonna have chaos, mm -hmm. you see? So, so there is never an interest in improving the condition of our people. It's only the interest of maintaining the oppression, which a uh, 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 way to do that is to continue the exploitation. And as far as true love movement is concerned, what true love movement does is, I mean, the whole thing is about rehumanization. Right. And, and we have a, a class called the power class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are so proud of this because we have seen it really work with getting the wheels turning and, and like removing some things from our eyes, some blinders. Yeah. And, and we feel like people who are coming straight out of uh, prison need that power class definitely yeah. to get, and it's a, it's our political education class, to understand the traps of prison. Prison is, was never meant to rehabilitate anyone. Mm. Prison is meant for modern day slavery, for slavery period. And the recidivism rate, you know, is just outstanding. It's like, we don't understand that once you get in and you come back out, you can't even function mm -hmm. as a, you know, somebody to take care of your family and, and get the skills you need to do whatever you need to do to do that. And you end up going, you know, people, are, people end up going back. That's it right. is a trap. It is definitely. It is a trap, and mm -hmm. and our people need to understand and know that. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 we don't even talk about the children mm -hmm. of incarcerated parents right. and how mm -hmm. hurt and damaged they are. Mm -hmm. it, it's just perpetuated sickness, and mm -hmm. and true love movement has, you know, this power class for sure, mm -hmm. but also just the understanding of. Um, 
how damaged our brothers and sisters are when they come out of that and and also envisioning a world without prisons mm -hmm. right you know mm -hmm. that's right. a, a huge mm -hmm. part of 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 talking about prisons well brother shag mentioned yes. the term fix mm -hmm. and one thing i constantly hear from mental health professionals is that when they're taking on clients whether it's the parents the guardians or the custodians the first thing they want to know or the first thing they will say is well why are you not fixing my child or mm -hmm. my yeah. adolescent or mm -hmm. young adult or what have you mm -hmm. you know I thought you were supposed to be fixing that's right her or him it seems like you're not fixing them <laughs> and it seems like it's a difficult bridge to get people to understand well it's tough to fix somebody if you still have certain things occurring in their environment. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps if y'all could just, you know, deal with that issue, because I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. It seems like people looking for this quick fix, and when that's not the case, okay, well, what can you do about getting, you know, him or her some prescriptions? Mm -hmm. And maybe that can, 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 mm -hmm. can fix right. this problem. Yeah, right. they're looking for that quick fix. They're looking for that magic wand, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And black people are magic, and we understand that, but we don't have a magic wand to fix your child. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, depending on the child, the age of the child, the parent has all the control on what happens to right. that child. And a lot of the time, when you see a child with a lot of issues, mm -hmm. the, it points to what's going on in the home. It points to the parenting mm -hmm. every time. And so that's why at True Love Movement, we don't just deal with the, the child. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. we have a child, we're dealing with the family, we're dealing with the mama first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we're dealing with the family as a unit and healing and, and creating a healing space right mm -hmm. we're not fixing nobody this is a healing thing mm -hmm. and a lot of the time it's about us healing ourselves mm -hmm. and depending on the age of the children it's about mama healing her baby mm -hmm. and, and when she heals herself mm -hmm. so what you say brother Shane? well I, I think there was a lot in it was it was heavy it was a lot in what you were asking because you're right about the idea that this is a repair service. I always say they call mm -hmm. it a repair service. Not mm -hmm. at all. But, but even the idea and conceptually, like client, mm -hmm. that word client means mm -hmm. to control. It's a Latin to word to, to control and obey. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's, a, that's a power dynamic in a relationship. So you got a client, which isn't a human being. So it's already impersonal. Mm -hmm. And that client is essentially a case, and you got a case file. So that's what that's what it is. So you're dealing with fixing a file. So that's what I'm saying. It's further dehumanization of our people. Mm -hmm. So it, again, you, you fix something that's broke. And, and think about that. When something is broke, it's out of order. You, you, you dig? So, mm -hmm. so this whole idea about fixing suggests that there's something inherently wrong. We don't talk about fixing the systems that uh, are feet of oppression on the people. Mm -hmm. See, we want to fix There's the no people, you, right. but we don't have a systems analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem because that's, that's, it doesn't lend any visibility to how the, in the, the person came to be in that condition. Because if we do that, we'll find the source. And we will find that it was not, in fact, those individual people. Mm -hmm. We have a story, and our stories are, our legacy is in enslavement. Mm -hmm. And really, we can trace all that's wrong with black people mm -hmm. to that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not oversimplifying it, but, I'm, but being able to do that, you see the shoulders drop, man, mm -hmm. when, you, when we start talking about that, because the people know it. You know, we do, a lot of that power class is about remembering. Yes. And, and remembering in, in so much that, that word remember, to, to read, to do again, and the word member means to assemble. So we're reassembling. So we're showing our people that you've got it. Yes, yes. That we're not putting something into you. Uh -huh. We're actually drawing it out of you. That's what real education is. It's to draw education or educa, educa, educa is to draw out of. So we're showing our people who they are, how brilliant they are, yeah. which, which shifts a person's sense of their, uh, what they can do, their own efficacy. And as a result, you get a different kind of behavior. So, so the, the introduction or reintroduction or remembering of the information with some practical skills on how to apply it shows somebody that I can do for myself right out the gate. Mm -hmm. But for our audience and, and for those who are listening to us and going to catch us on the internet, can you give your contact information and just, you know, what perhaps you may have upcoming? Sure. And, you know, and just mm -hmm. let, you know, let everyone know. 
Well, the contact information is simply www.truelovemovement.com. Again, that's truelovemovement.com. And of course, you know, we're on social media, True Love Movement, uh, Facebook, Instagram, True Love Movement, uh, Twitter, at TLMHR. Uh, there is a True Love Movement, uh, True Love Movement uh, YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and there's a, and we are on the radio every Saturday on mm -hmm. WBOK for this is this will be our fifth year, okay. uh, at five o'clock uh, doing this kind of a thing, and uh, you know Mama Fire has something uh, is a part of something really important that's coming up. Yeah, so next weekend they have a women's healing conference. And so I'll be uh, facilitating a workshop on emotional healing. Okay. Um, you know, our, our sisters especially hold so much power. And as our sisters heal, we're going to see a big, huge shift happen in our families and, okay. and with black people and understand that. Um, and so I also have an album that's right. coming out. And so when we talk about the creative arts and media component of True Love Movement, that's very intentional and on purpose because we're talking about groups and we're talking about the masses of people. And so we create videos and we're on the radio and these kind of things. But I also am a spoken word hip hop poet. I have two books. I'm an author as well. That's right. And so uh, for people who won't read, mm -hmm. we have a play. We you know we've done a play. For people yes. who who won't watch a play, we do music. For mm -hmm. people who don't want to listen to the radio, we try to get it every single way we can. Get the mm -hmm. message out and the mission out. And so I have a um, album coming out soon too. And I'm okay. so I'm yeah. so proud of you with that too, man. But you know, well, now are there any limitations or generally y'all can can service or see anyone or black people for okay. sure yeah, so um, no only, age limitation or no nothing? Lim okay. we start at uh three years old because okay. we do do play therapy which we have seen work tremendously mm -hmm. with the little ones okay um and then we see all the way up and then we take all major insurances okay you know medicaid for our people um, okay and so okay. yeah we have a functional office that okay. you come in and see us we also see people out in the community okay. you know we, this is real okay mm -hmm. well is there any other information you want to let as we want Winding down here our with the time. Number. Our phone number. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah, yeah. You want so to give you up. can call five zero four three zero nine. Love. Okay. Repeat right. that one more time. Okay, that's easy to remember. Easy to remember. Yeah. Five zero four three zero nine. Love. Okay. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, it was once again. I was. I was glad to be able to catch up with these two. And it was, mm -hmm. we appreciate having you here. Remember, True Love Movement. We got Mama Fire, Brother Shaq. Right on. And please contact them and don't be afraid to ask for help. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Right on. Thank you, dear yeah, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it.
There was Dr. James welding cords around a copper frame. We sing songs, not for the accolades, to lift voices like a helicopter blade. High in the listening skies, my eyes glisten and tears drop down like rain. Not from the pain, from the joy of how far we came. My brainstorms are designed to celebrate our reign. <laughs> The collective, monuments erected, continents affected, presidents elected, ancestors making moves with the music we've been blessed with. We use it to keep communities connected, through harmonies, a harmony is collected, reaping the fruits our foremothers invested, lift every voice till freedom has been invested. Yeah. Yeah. 